Hi, my name is Philip Kirikoff. I'm a partner with Horizon Ventures, and we're currently raising a new venture fund, early stage venture fund in South Africa called Horizon Ventures Africa. And I will be the general partner of that fund. Okay. And what, what, what's the general global climate as, as far as raising funds for venture capital? Well, the global climate is still, uh, still challenging. I mean, the markets are, are still recovering. Uh, however, uh, in South Africa and in Africa in particular, there, we, we believe that there's actually a very, this is a perfect time to be doing this. So uh, we're finding great uh, appetite for amongst investors. Uh, who are buying into the, uh, the the Africa scene, the Africa story, and we think that there's going to be an opportunity for uh, for significant returns. Uh, and of course, uh, we also are in for the long term play. So we actually are expecting not only to raise one fund, but actually multiple funds over the over the next uh, seven to ten years. And the South African uh, climate is it, is it very competitive in, in the field that you're in? Well, there are, um, in, in, in the entirety of South Africa, there's about 10 funds. Uh, there is approximately, a, well, there's under 100 million rand that was invested last year uh, in venture investments so that, that, you know, say tech early stage Series A investments. So uh, it's quite early. Uh, it's The ecosystem itself is still developing. Um, however, we think that that's going to, that, that trend is actually poised to ex to explode exponentially. And that's one of the reasons that we we want to be here, uh, but we don't view ourselves as competitive to the other funds. We view it as an ecosystem building and growing. So we think that rather than competing over pieces of the pie, uh, that we're actually much more interested in helping to grow the pie to be something substantially larger, uh, and that will benefit all the funds that are that are here. What would you say the main factors pushing innovation as a business? So, innovation in. I mean, innovation in general uh, requires a number of things. Obviously, uh, there's resources, there's ideas, uh, human capital, uh, and, and actual capital. Uh, South Africa actually has an incredible design community. Uh, there's, uh, there's a tech hub here. There's a number of tech hubs here, but there's innovation centers. Uh, the, there's universities like UCT and Stellenbosch uh, that are producing world-class engineers and talent. Uh, unfortunately, uh, right now, the scene, the environment is such that in many cases, some of the top uh, South African entrepreneurs uh, choose to go overseas to build their businesses and to, to grow elsewhere. Uh, so they'll go to places like Silicon Valley. Um, but certainly, you know, some of the top uh, entrepreneurs even out there, so Elon Musk and Vinnie Lingam and uh, uh, Mark Shuttleworth, you know, are, are great examples of South African entrepreneurs who have uh, built fantastic businesses uh, but have done so overseas. So what we're very interested in is helping to support uh, and grow the ecosystem here uh, that would allow those entrepreneurs uh, and, and others that are following in their footsteps uh, and those that potentially are standing on their shoulders to uh, build and grow those businesses here within South Africa without in, in Sub-Saharan Africa and elsewhere. But build businesses that are addressing Africa problems, that are addressing the unique scenarios that are, that are here um, and we think that the best place to do that is, is right here within South Africa. Okay. Can we just expand a little bit more on why you're, you're focusing on South Africa? Just go into a bit more detail on that. Sure. Well, <laughs> for obvious reasons, it's an amazing place to live, uh, especially in Cape Town. So uh, from, there's a personal motivation to, you know, to want to find, uh, you know, there's, a, there's a lifestyle here. And that's compelling not just to me on a personal level, but certainly uh, that is a, an important part of what draws many entrepreneurs to places like Silicon Valley uh, in the U.S., where the general lifestyle, the enthusiasm, the ecosystem, the adrenaline, uh, everything is built up in support and, and enables further enhancement, further innovation. Uh, so w I want to be in an environment like that. Uh, in the late 90s, I was uh, in New York during the, the first dot-com run-up and was at the epicenter of that, some of the hottest startups of the dot-com era was involved with those at a, at a deep level as a, on the founding side as, a, as an executive uh, and then of course also on the venture side. So I worked at a, at a venture fund called Rare Medium Ventures that had raised uh, $220 million. We invested in 21 companies uh, over the course of a year. So it was a frenetic pace. Uh, the term irrational exuberance uh, very well describes that, that period of time. And, uh, and I see all those same uh, ingredients here in Cape Town and South Africa, South Africa in particular, but Cape Town uh, specifically, uh, 
those all, all those ingredients are, are here now. And one of the things that I'm very keen to do is to help uh, support the rapid growth and the expansion and the excitement and the, and the exuberance, uh, but without the irrationality. So to marry it with uh, sound business practices and with solid growth strategies uh, so that that enthusiasm and that burst of innovation can, can be done on a sustained basis. His, uh, for, the, for the layman, what, what's the kind of business model with an organization like Horizon? I mean, you, you raise capital for it to, to, to be invested in uh, startups and so forth. Can you just talk us through the, the kind of the, the business model, what the incentive is? Sure. I mean, a venture capital is, is a fairly straightforward uh, model. Uh, investors put the money in. Uh, they're promised, or, or they're it's certainly not promised, but investors put the money in uh, on the hope, on the expectation of uh, returns that meet certain thresholds. Uh, they, typically, the investments are made over a five to seven year period. Um, that's called the investment period. Uh, and then there is uh, usually a liquidation period or a harvest period. Uh, of another uh, three to five years where uh, there's no new investments that are made with all the capital, um, but there is time spent uh, winding down those investments. And so during that period, uh, the startups are expected to exit or, uh, or, or be acquired or however that's, uh, whatever the liquidation is going to be uh, that allows the fund to get its money back. And then of course that money is distributed back to the investors. And uh, the investors, of course, by putting in their money, are getting the, the they receive the first returns. Uh, but assuming that the returns uh, exceed what that promised threshold is, uh, then the managers of the fund also get to participate generously in uh, in the in the returns. Okay, and is there a tr track record in terms of South Africa that you can refer to? So, South Africa has uh, obviously the the venture scene here is very nascent. Uh, it's had uh, several funds that have been created during the uh, mid to late 90s. There was actually a, a, a run-up of a number of, of funds. Um, here, because this, the, the, the ecosystem is so small, most of, many of the funds, in fact, I would say most of the investment vehicles, um, aren't purely VC or they don't invest specifically in tech. So they'll invest in, uh, in mining or resources or uh, devices or medical, etc. Um, so it is, it is a little bit difficult to look at that and, uh, and, and, and make apples to apples comparisons with, with more mature venture markets. However, uh, the funds that have done, uh, have made investments are hampered by another much more considerable issue and that is exits. Uh, the South African market is very difficult, uh, thus far has, has not allowed for many, uh, many exits of, 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 of substance. So uh, traditionally when uh, acquisition is made, that information, the, the size of that information doesn't necessarily become publicly available. So it's not IPO pops in the same way that you would see a Facebook or a Google. Um, so it's, it's quite difficult to objectively measure and compare the venture funds that have started in, 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 uh, in South Africa versus, versus other markets. Um, However, there are a couple, uh, the most notable fund was a fund called Here Be Dragons, which was an outgrowth of Mark Shuttleworth's uh, initial investments. And Here Be Dragons has, uh, they've made, I think, seven or eight investments. Uh, they've already had a couple of exits, and just on the basis of the first two or three exits, uh, they've already exceeded the minimum returns needed for, uh, for the investors. Uh, and what that means is that the fund is now uh, effectively everything, every exit from here forward will just be pure profit uh, for the investors and, and for the fund. So that's, that's obviously a dream scenario uh, for the fund managers. Uh, however, you know, of course it did take a very long time and the, the principal investor in that scenario was, was just one, one LP. Okay. Can we talk about the, what sectors you're particularly interested in if, 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 you do, if you're partial to certain areas? So yeah, Horizon Ventures is very interested in early stage, uh, well, we'll say Series A, which typically is gonna mean that the company has already uh, developed a product, they've got some core members of their team in place, uh, they've likely gotten some amount of traction, they're generating revenue of some sort, although you know, not necessarily profitable. Um, but that, what those things indicate is that they've, they've really nailed down what their primary product and service could be. Uh, as far as sectors or industries, 
uh, you know, we're looking at uh, mobile, uh, what's typically called uh, ICT, which is uh, internet communications, telecom. And uh, we also are very keen on what we call bottom of the pyramid. So we're looking at feature phones, mobile devices, but specifically not smartphones. Um, most people would be surprised to know that uh, even though smartphones are outselling feature phones now, just above 50% of, of new devices that are sold, as far as global penetration, um, it's still only about 30%. It's not going to be for another four or five years uh, before the total number of, of smartphones uh, exceeds the number of feature phones uh, globally. Uh, and it's going to be even longer before that happens in the continent of Africa. So even in, in four or five years out, which is as far out as the projections go, uh, feature phone penetration in Africa is still almost two-thirds of the devices. Now, at the same time, feature phones are becoming much smarter. Um, so they offer some of, many of the capabilities that you would typically expect to see on fe and smartphones, uh, but uh, but they have much longer battery life. They may have smaller. They generally have smaller screens, uh, so and they're not so concerned with resolution, uh, which means many of the high-end apps that you would find on iStores or or, uh, or Android um, aren't you know aren't, aren't opted for that. They're not geared for feature phones. So that's a that's a that's an immense opportunity that, that we see, and we're quite keen to exploit. Um, that, uh, we'll say, ignorance <laughs> in the market uh, by developing apps and, and investing in companies that are developing apps that are going after, after a, a very substantial um, early state or, or a low end, low tier, bottom tier market. Okay. So typically, you know, we look for companies that are, uh, that are looking for, our average investment is going to be, say, 5 million to 15 million rand, but that would be over a, a multi year span. So a company that's you know probably looking for you know two to uh, two to five million in their first round or first tranche, uh, and typically that's going to be six to eight months worth of growth for them. Uh, we're obviously looking for companies that are scalable that are have the potential to grow well beyond just South Africa, um, Pan Africa, and and even beyond. Uh, we're looking for companies that uh, already have you know, the, the core members of the team in place. Uh, you know, ideally, there's some prior experience with uh, another startup or, or, or you know, in, in the particular industry in the sector that they're, that they're developing for, but that's not you know, a, a must-have. Um, we also look for uh, companies that simply have, have great audacity. So be able to, that look at problems that everyone else says can't be solved and, and they, they think they can anyway. So, um, or, or find clever uh, nuances to a market. So when people look at Africa and say, we're gonna go for bottom of the pyramid, or when we talk about this extensively, uh, the general perception is that there's not enough uh, potential income. Um, and on a per subscriber basis, it would be very difficult to, to build up a business model, but when you talk about having uh, a middle class, an emerging middle class, it's you know, in excess of 300 million people on this continent, um, and we see that as a, as a very addressable market and one which, thankfully, uh, very few uh, developers or, or very few uh, companies are going after. Some of the challenges that, that we face, well, there's, there's, it's really a twofold question. So there's challenges that we face in terms of getting the funds raised. Uh, and in many cases, or the principal challenges are there's, there's some legislative considerations uh, in South Africa. Um, there are some hurdles that relate to uh, just registration of, of the actual fund itself. Um, and convincing investors that those items, those issues, aren't going to be, uh, aren't going to derail the fund. But we think that those are very solvable, and it's really just a matter of conversation. So, um, once the fund is raised, uh, the much bigger hurdle, of course, is finding and making sure that we can find seven to ten investments, which is what we need in order to make our numbers. Uh, seven to ten investments that return uh, reasonable amounts to uh, to the fund within a defined period of time. So the companies have to be, they can't be lifestyle businesses that just grow slow. We need businesses that have decent ramp up rates uh, and that you know, have a good potential for an exit at some point in you know, five to seven years down the line. So you know, identifying those companies, finding those entrepreneurs, funding the companies, obviously you know, as, we, as we expect that the ecosystem grows, I'm sure at some point we'll be competing with some of the other venture funds to make some of those ideal investments. So, you know, we're going to be uh, challenged to continue to showcase our own capabilities as being one of the, the top firms that, that people would want to accept money from us. Um, 
we also uh, we also expect that there's going to be just hurdles in terms of scale. So uh, a 10 million or 100 million rand venture fund um, has it's it's a very small fund, and as such, there's not very much budget for um, for the management company itself to operate. Uh, funds tend to be tend to be more optimized when you get up around the uh, 800 million to a billion rand size. So that would be the second fund we would raise, but before we can do that, we need to be able to show to our investors that, uh, that we can produce returns or at least uh, a track record that uh, leads them to believe that there would be returns down the line uh, so that we can go out and we can raise a second fund. We also face the potential challenge of uh, finding uh, talent to come and work for the venture because the industry itself is so nascent uh, and the funds that have been started are naturally holding on to their <laughs> Uh, their key personnel uh, for new funds coming in if you're looking to bring on board analysts and uh, there's, there's simply not a big pool of, of executives, of, of professionals that have direct VC experience. So you know, we would be looking at some of the other industries, uh, some of the other finance related industries and then obviously training up some of our, uh, some of our staff. So Horizon started in 2004. Uh, we were originally a US India fund that we saw the India opportunity fairly early on and, and we wanted to go and, uh, and, and capitalize on that. Uh, my partner who was in India uh, was also colleagues with uh, a, f a friend of his who was raising a SoftBank fund uh, and SoftBank uh, decided that they would bring us on as the India partner. So we struck a deal with them where uh, our offices became the India office for SoftBank fund. So my partner uh, went on to become a managing director with that fund and, uh, and we've been able to make sidecar investments alongside, so we've now made five uh, investments alongside SoftBank uh, since 2006, and we've made uh, one additional investment that was outside of that uh, arrangement. Um, Horizon Ventures in 2012 decided it was going to uh, start looking into the Africa Fund. Uh, I've been doing due diligence here since 2011, and, uh, and we're looking to launch, uh, well, so now we're in our active fundraising period. Uh, and our intention is to close on a 100 million rand fund, uh, probably in two tranches. So the first tranche of uh, 30 to 40 million rand we'll, we expect to close in September, October. Um, and the follow on, the, the completion of the fund would be closed in, in, in early January 2014. Um, we have offices out at the Bandwidth Barn and uh, we actually do have uh, the ability to make existing investments today uh, for uh, out, of the, out of the current horizon uh, fund. So we are starting to look, although our active focus at this point is still uh, understanding the ecosystem and the fundraising 